do you effectively manage your thriving business and also put time into volunteer leadership? That question came in from a very dear friend and a woman I admire very greatly who is preparing for her year as president of a real estate organization in 2024. The first thing I would say is that your clients and past clients and sphere and friends and family and all those people to whom you're connected need to know that you're about to spend more time in volunteer leadership and that's not a bad thing. For too many of us, we just serve and then we try to cover our tracks. We try to hide the pictures of travel or you don't explain well what all the selfies are and you don't explain what the networking is. And that means your people at home in your community don't know that your service is beneficial to them. One of the most amazing things about serving in our real estate organizations is that the networking is with other professionals and they're bringing you ideas and market information from where they are. You get to see things from another perspective and you say, man, that might be beneficial right here where I am. And then we get to bring those ideas back to our clients. In fact, I can give you a great example of that. I was at a state convention in 2022 and just mingling with some other brokers. And we were having a discussion about how do you get your happy clients to write better reviews online? And he said oh, the smartest thing ever. He said, when I'm talking about my agency relationship and I'm talking about how compensation works and explaining what I'm bringing to the table, I ask them right then that at the end of everything, if they're happy, won't they please just go ahead and commit to writing me a review? And they're all saying yes. And I said, oh my gosh, what a brilliant idea. And so of course, being in real estate, I totally forgot about it for a few months. And then my team and I put it into effect this year. And you know what's happened? We're getting more reviews from our satisfied clients because we asked for it earlier and made it not just a request, but an expectation. That's the kind of thing that you learn from the peers when you're in leadership. And there's so much more beyond that because you also find that when you have a challenge in your own market or a hiccup with your agents or your clients and you don't really know how to react or what to do, you have other peers you can go to and say, work with me through this. Have you experienced this? What can I learn? Because one of the most amazing parts of leadership is that you get to acknowledge that you don't know everything because somebody out there definitely has been through it and knows things and will pour back into you because similar mindsets go into leadership. It's the people who not only give, but who know how to receive. And that's a really magical thing in life. So I would tell her to let people know that's one of the things that she will experience that will be coming back home to the business. Now, the second most important thing about preparing for a year in leadership is to get your time management under control because your time can be frittered away in a million ways. Zoom has actually made this worse because a lot of people think they only need an hour of your time on Zoom or only 30 minutes. And we all know in real estate, it's always about double the time that you were asked for. And that's fine if you've got it planned for. So what you would tell your clients is, I'm going to be involved in leadership. It will involve some travel. So I'll be doing more over text and email and just alert them to that scenario. Let them know that when you have phone calls, you may have only nine minutes, but that you will tell them the start and the finish so that they know they may need to get to the point sooner and you may not be able to chitter chatter quite as much as you like, but you're gonna have to figure out the trade-offs. You might also find that in your leadership role, you're able to carve out your Mondays or your Fridays for protecting your business. And then you let your clients know, those are my hot and heavy days. That's when I can do listing appointments and that's when I can have buyer consultations. So that way they know how to work into your schedule because a lot of the public really wants to work with the realtor they wanna work with. And if we would but tell them our availability, they could work with us and then we would have better symbiotic relationships. Now, the third most important thing after telling people what you're doing and time management is to have a partner at home in your business. Now you may already have this partner and you trust them implicitly, but if going into this leadership time, you don't yet have a somebody who can absolutely be trusted with every angle of your business, get busy finding that person. How you compensate them depends on how your business is set up. Now maybe it's a salaried person or an hourly person, or maybe it's a fellow real estate professional who would be comfortable with a portion of how you split the fees that come in, but make sure there's somebody who is excellent. They might even be better at the business than you are. I will say that one of the reasons I'm able to serve is that the agents in my office, they're as good or better at real estate than I am. And, and maybe it's because I trained them, but maybe it's just because they're awesome. 
So I know that when I have their assistance with my client base, my clients are so well served that I can breathe a sigh of relief. And that allows me to stay focused on my leadership role and do a great job because I can only do a great job if I'm supported by other people doing great jobs. And frankly, we're not paid in these volunteer positions and it's important to keep our businesses thriving because we do love serving our community through real estate. So I will tell you, friend, as you head into this, transparency is magical, time management helps protect your nerves, and then having somebody to support you allows you to breathe and also be focused on doing the best job possible so that you won't just serve in your year, you will enjoy serving in your year. And what that means also is if you're serving in your community in Habitat for Humanity or in the Battered Women's Shelter or in your church or school or wherever you serve, you can lean on all of these same tips because service shouldn't drain you, it should fill you right back up.